Double. Make them walk, sit up, kick, or climb. Making robots move can still be a heart-stopping experience. And the Robotics and Mechanisms Lab here at Virginia Tech is right at the leading edge of robot mobility. The hot thing these days in robotics is the concept of biologically inspired locomotion. People think nature has the best solutions for these kind of problems. Now problems in the world of robots are different from the problems encountered by you and me. For instance, how do you make a tripod walk? According to Dennis Hong, it's accomplished with passive dynamic locomotion. In simple terms, it flips its leg forward and just falls on it. Even though it has only three legs, the concept of passive dynamic locomotion, to use its built-in dynamics to walk, is actually almost closer to a human being walking. Because when you walk, you don't really use your muscles to move your limbs, but you just naturally just let it swing. Called Strider, or Self-Excited Tripedal Dynamic Experimental Robot, there doesn't appear to be a big brain telling these legs what to do. There's a new term called mechanical intelligence, so not relying on computer's intelligence, but the intelligence is built into the mechanism itself. So as you've seen a strider taking a step, it doesn't do joint position controls like those mechanical robots that you see normally, but it uses its built-in dynamics. Watching strider try to walk is like watching an infant take its initial steps. Except on this day, baby strider takes a tumble from which it can't recover. So when the strider fell, the impact actually caused this link to break off. We had this problem before, so if you look at this link, it's much thicker, and you don't have any stress concentration. So we need to uh, replace all two links with this one, which, which is much improved. MARS, it stands for Multi-Appendage Robotic System. It's a six-leg hexapod robot that we're working with NASA JPL. Uh, so NASA is now interested not only in uh, wheeled rovers for Mars exploration, but they're interested in a new type of legged vehicles for use in in-space and zero-gravity environments. So one of their robot series, uh, the Lemur-class robots, are designed to be used in space in zero-gravity to uh, walk outside a space station or the next generation space shuttle, the CV, for autonomous maintenance and inspection tasks. So Mars is our version of Lemur. Apparently, the Mars robot has an overinflated sense of its own abilities. One of the lab's favorite robots, though, is Darwin. That stands for Dynamic Anthropomorphic Robot with Intelligence. It's a humanoid robot, which means that it has the proportion of a human being, two legs, bipedal robot, and a body, torso, and arms, and a head. Uh, we really originally developed this robot to study human walking, human locomotion. Now we added intelligence and a lot of sensors, two firewire cameras, IMUs, gyros, four sensors. For instance, to play soccer, the robot first acquires the ball with its camera eyes. It figures out on its own where the ball is, and how it needs to position its body to best connect with the ball. Sometimes it does a lousy job. They're now working on other pattern recognition programs. Darwin is very smart and very interactive, so it can even play a game of dice. Uh, Darwin doesn't have any ability to hear, so we communicate via signs. For example, if you want to say hello to Darwin, you just show the sign, handshake. Oh, hello Darwin and it shakes your hand. If you want to play a game, I just show him a sign. Would you like to play a game of dice, Darwin? Okay. We have a dice. Would you like the orange dice? Oh, you got a five. Not my turn? Okay, I got a red dice. Oh, I got a two. I guess you win, Darwin. Good for you. The robot lab at Virginia Tech has lots more ideas for robot locomotion. From spokes to robots that turn themselves inside out, they've proven they're a team that's not afraid to take a kick at something a little bit different.